I give a clap? Can I set this behind me right there? Or is that going to matter? So as an introduction, this is Devin Desjardins, and this is his solo exhibition in Los Angeles, uh, the title Guardians. Let's talk about the show title, let's start at the beginning. Yeah. Um, the concept behind the title and the works, can you tell us a little bit about what a guardian is or isn't to you? Yeah. And how these paintings reflect that? Definitely, so Guardians originated from uh, my studies of world religion in university. Um, I was trying to find a common thread between the perspectives and the worldviews that I was studying at the time. And I realized that in every kind of major religion or worldview or some sort of spiritual context, there was a guardian or protector within each perspective or worldview. And that was a common thread, you know, in Christianity, you have Christ with the angels. And that perspective that I started to, to realize that I wanted to paint and, you know, come up with my own version of a guardian that wasn't specific to a certain ideology or perspective um, where the viewer could come and stand in front of my paintings and find whatever that they found true in their own heart um, within the painting itself. We all face times of distress, of pain, of, um, like I said, emotional turmoil, but at the same time we've all had moments in life where we've sought out um, the need for someone to protect us or guide us or to give us advice or wisdom on the path that we're taking. Um, and all of us have different views of what that is. We all have, you know, different perspectives and different ideas of what it is that needs to be brought into our life to help us down that path that we're taking. Um, you know, for some it's a, a God figure, to some it's, you know, a sense of entertainment, to some it's a, a sense of experience. I think that we all come to the table with perspective, that we all come to the table with um, a sense of knowledge. And for me, the goal with Guardians is to open up the discussion. It's to open up the discussion of, hey, some of us come to the table broken, some of us come to the table with a ton of understanding of what we need. Um, Guardians, I guess, in a sense, just becomes a discussion for me, and it becomes a, a Lord of the Flies conch um, where it can be a totem for the conversation to be opened up. Well, it's, it's also a very interesting dichotomy with art as well because a lot of the definition is of what is art meant to do. Mm -hmm. in, in a lot of senses, it's meant to elevate. It's meant to transcend yeah. this, this kind of our daily lives and take us somewhere else. Yeah. When you walk up to a blank canvas mm -hmm. and you have a, a paintbrush and you have some tubes of color, mm -hmm. how do you take that leap of faith into the canvas and, and, and how do these start? Yeah. Like, what's the beginning of a painting for you? I'd say it varies. I mean, there's times when I've come into my studio where I've, you know, gone through a heavy week or a heavy month and I feel angry walking into my studio. There's times where I walk into my, my studio and approach a canvas and I stare at the blank sheet and I'm feeling overwhelmed with joy um, and happiness. And, it's interesting as I walk around now that the show's been hung up and see the paintings that I've, you know, created from scratch. And I don't think there is a set way of like, I start with a sketch, then it turns into a big form sketch, and then it goes into an outline and a painting. Um, I think as I'm in my everyday life, if it's the back of a receipt paper at a diner or if it's a napkin at a restaurant, those certain moments or conversations that I'm having with people, I figure out a certain overall shape and then when I enter into the studio with the mixed emotions that I have, that painting comes to life in color and shape and form from that original sketch that I found at that moment, if that makes sense. It does, so you're, you're almost conveying an emotion through color. And yeah. Through mark making. Yeah, so I find my outline in the everyday conversations that I have and the everyday sketches. I guess I go around and I sketch in different elements, but the moment that I approach the canvas to paint, the, the colors and the heavy outlines and the actual form of that sketch kind of transcends and, and, and changes based on the current state of emotion that I'm in. When you're creating a painting, mm -hmm. and, I, and I've, I've, had the, I've been fortunate to watch you put this body of work together, yeah. which is an extraordinary experience because I've seen you go from drawings to sketches to paintings. But when you're, when you're and I, I don't want to lead you on this, but mm. when you're painting a painting, are you thinking the whole show, or is it just that one painting at that moment matters for you? For me, I wanted to create um, a sense of light and dark, and I mean that not in the sense of actual color, light and dark, but 
the version of some sort of spiritual atmosphere of, of light conquering dark and dark interfering with light. And, and how I did that with this show is even just looking around now is I've painted the 13 guardians, which for me represent a, a, a version of protection, of guidance, of, um, of wisdom during times of turmoil, um, while at the same time creating smaller sketches of these darker formed kind of secondary guardians that are there to represent kind of the, the nightmares, the pain, the sacrifice, the times that really pull at your hair. Um, and created those guardians at a bigger level, a larger scale, to kind of overpower those smaller works, but at the same time create those smaller works in a way that really draw you in as a viewer. So you're almost acknowledging the darkness to get to the light. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think, you know, it's that classic line, it's like, you know, the light always, sh what is it, this light always shines brighter over the darkest moment or whatever, or the, right before the sun has a breakthrough, it's the darkest moment of night, right? Um, I don't think these guardians would be as impactful if you don't touch on the darkness in life. And I'm not supporting the idea that we need to have darkness in order to understand light, but I think that darkness does allow the light to become something much more powerful um, when we look at it. So as, as the person who's one of the people, as Coats and Scary, that's worked with yeah. this exhibition, and as we've taken these paintings, broader outside of LA for you. Yeah. Because what's been interesting and exciting for us is this is very much a, a, an epic Los Angeles, California show. Mm -hmm. But most of the works at this stage are going to Europe yeah. and going to other countries. Mm -hmm. How does that feel for you as an artist and, and a young artist, especially at this stage in your career, to do mm -hmm. such large scale works and to be reaching collectors who have been collecting for many years but are finding, they're finding that emotional content in your work, they're finding an identity in your work, or they're finding that mm. conversation for them, or they just fall in love. You know, what is that like yeah. for you as an artist when somebody walks up to your painting and they yeah. have to have that painting? Um, yeah, I mean, it's overwhelming. I, I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's exciting, it's overwhelming, um, it creates a sense of nerves, but I think I find a lot of joy in the idea that this message, this, this commonality of what I'm trying to express is something that doesn't have boundaries. It's not specific to just one city, it's not specific to just one person, but it's something that can be found in everyday people all over the world and not just, like I said, one, one specific spot. So you're back in that place again when art is doing its job well. It's a language that transcends. Yeah, I mean, that, that is the hope. It's what every, I mean, every artist's hope is, I mean, from what I see is it's, we want to be able to have our viewers connect with the art. We want to have our viewers be able to find themselves within a painting. We want our viewers to wrestle with their own thoughts, wrestle with their own emotions, and not just come in, look at all of it, and walk out and be like, ah, oh, it was cool. Thanks for the drink. Thanks for the appetizer. I'm out, right? We want them to go home and be like, well, why did that one painting just stay in my head, you know? What's interesting as well for you is, you know, we live in the era of Instagram. Yeah. And we live in the era of people have a three to five second attention span with yeah. images. We're swiping all the time. Yeah. But you've been able to make that transition from people avidly following you and wanting to get involved with your process yeah. on Instagram to actually, you know, they don't just want it for three seconds. They want that painting. Yeah. They want to know more about you. They want to mm -hmm. own the art and put that in their house. Yeah. When you're working through social media, mm -hmm. is it about sharing your process? Is it about enticing us? Yeah. Or is it about involving us in your work. I like to just show my everyday process, my everyday life without going too far into the idea of like, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is the craziness of this whole thing. It's like, I just like to show my work and I like to people to be able to feel that they're in the studio with me seeing me create something from nothing. I feel the more I develop these works of art, the more I'm gonna step away from just posting the art itself and going more into the story behind of how I get to this point of creating something. So, stepping away. Mm -hmm. What is your letting go process like for you? You've created this painting to, to your children in a sense. Mm -hmm. What is it like for you knowing that they won't be coming back to your studio and they won't be yeah. coming home and they'll go off and they'll, they'll have their own, you know, they'll have a life of their own elsewhere now? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, you know, in a way it's like letting your children go. I, get, I don't have any kids, but I feel like that expression that I've heard is, in a sense, it's letting, you know, a part of you 
enter into a new atmosphere. You know, I feel very connected to each and every piece I make. I feel when I'm creating them, there is that, that moment where I feel a relate, like a release of my spirit. I feel like it's the same when musicians write a song or they perform, they feel that energy go out and it becomes, you know, one with the crowd or one with the consumer. I, I feel that within my painting. So it's exciting that they're going to somewhere and I feel like I'm a part of, you know, another country. I'm a part of another family. I'm a part of another home. Um, but in a sense, it is a part of you that you're losing. And there is that detachment that happens and it's, it's bittersweet. That light and dark again. The light and dark again. Light and dark. Now that we've spent time talking about the formal structure, mm -hmm. the geometric structure of your paintings, yeah. I would like to bring up again the, what I find very compelling, the works on paper. Yeah, so the works on paper, um, the kind of more scratchy free form, um, to me, there, it's, a, it's a transitional kind of phase for me of after spending time making these bold figures with you know, the geometric shapes, I wanted to kind of break out and have that free form um, flow. And I've always found like in the idea of like rebellion and pain and all that stuff, when you want, when you want to break free from it, you kind of tend to let loose, right? And in order to sh transcend that onto paper, I wanted to let myself go. And I know that sounds somewhat cliche, but I wanted to be able to break free from the mold of what I was doing in the studio and go to a piece of paper and just let loose. Almost create space. Almost create space, yeah. yeah. But in the same sense, a lot of the works on paper for me are that view of heavy emotional turmoil. I wanted to, like you can see in the show, that it's a lot darker, it's a lot more carved out. There is the scars in a sense within the painting, but at the same time, there is this kind of overall messiness to them. And just even looking into my own life and you know the lives of a lot of my friends and family that I've seen around me is like, there comes a point in a lot of people's lives where they tend to either rebel or let loose from the traditional mode they are in order to find themselves. So these, these works on paper are almost in a sense trying to capture that moment of which way are we gonna go? Are we gonna step back into kind of the bold pattern of where we already were? Or are we gonna go down that rabbit hole and end up in more of the mess? So you have that kind of faint face of a guardian or you have that face faint face of the, the bold geometric pattern with all of the messiness circulating around it. So we've talked about the work. Yeah. We have this extraordinary solo exhibition. Mm -hmm. um, the response has been outstanding. Yeah. You are a young artist, yep. but there are younger artists than you. What advice yeah. would you have for somebody that for younger than you or even older that has always yeah. wanted to create and make? What would you say to them? For me, the one word that I have always heard in my own brain is be genuine to who you are. Um, I find that in a lot of art that I don't necessarily agree with or resonate with, there is a sense that I see in there that it's the, the person or the art itself is not genuine to where it was created or how it was created or from whom it was created. Um, I wanted to always just be myself regardless of what people say. I don't want to be someone I'm not and put that on paper because I feel like people can see the kind of fakeness within the works of art. I feel like they can see the resignation of something that once was. Yes, I pull inspiration. Yes, I have the people that I look up to, the artists that I look up to, but I've always wanted to share a story that is true to myself and not a story that is someone else's. Um, if there's someone younger than me that's trying to move themselves into art, I'd say work your ass off. Work hard. Work every single day. Set up a set up a a schedule that where you are working on your craft. I mean, there are a lot of artists that are like, yeah, I just paint when I feel it, and they become great artists. For me, that's never been the case. I needed that set schedule of like, you're gonna wake up, you're gonna paint, and you're gonna go to work. Regardless if you touch a brush to the canvas today, go sit in front of a canvas and think. Um, yeah, but I just think there is a power in being yourself, and the world needs more people right now that aren't trying to be someone they've seen or someone that has been People need to be themselves and share that message because the most powerful message we can share is our own message. Authentic voices. Yeah, authentic Thank voices. Thank you for having an authentic voice. Thank you. Appreciate it.